For the marine survival project, we are looking at the phytoplankton in the Cowichan Bay. Well, phytoplankton is very important because it's the base of marine food web. Um, phytoplankton is food for zooplankton, which is food for salmon. So that's very important, the timing, the composition. Um, it could affect um, juvenile salmon marine survival. Uh, so biomass and composition of phytoplankton define biomass and composition of zooplankton and it can affect a juvenile salmon survival through the food web. That's the first thing. Uh, harmful algal blooms, red diet, so harmful algal blooms, and they cause fish kills and shellfish poisoning around the world, and it's a very big problem. Uh, so Pacific Salmon Foundation is actually the first organization that is looking into if harmful algal blooms here in BC affecting population of wild salmon. Because we know that um, salmon in BC that are raised in cage, they are suffering every year and aquaculture companies, they are losing millions of dollars every year due to harmful algal blooms. But we know nothing how it affects wild fish. Last year, we recorded three phytoplankton blooms in Cowichan Bay. And during a couple of blooms, fish were behaving normal. Um, but during another one, it was very apparent that fish were struggling. And we also were doing pit tagging project during this time. It's inserting a little pit tag in the belly. And usually fish almost never die after that. But during the pit tagging that we were doing during the bloom, uh, mortality rate increased dramatically and about 25% of the fish died right away. And later on when I was looking at the microscope, um, it confirmed that we had a bloom of Hitrasigma kashivo, which is the world famous fish killing algae. So this is the first report on a harmful algae affecting wild fish. Also a second result from the last year was that during non-toxic blooms, where just biomass was high, but it wasn't a toxic bloom event, just a bloom. Uh, when we were looking at the fish in the lab, um, about 60% of stomachs came back empty, which means that fish did not feed during the bloom, which is a very interesting observation, and we don't know why it happened. But once it's blooming, the fish in the Cowichan Bay in this year did not feed. I'm hoping that we're going to continue with the sampling, maybe increase sampling frequency, introduce histology, uh, maybe bring even a camera <laughs> on the boat uh, to record unusual fish behavior because it's one thing if you talk about this, it's another one you show the people and they just see right away that it is unusual. Um, analyze data that we already collected because once again knowledge is it's, its power and ocean is changing because blooms were here hundreds and thousands of years ago and Someone was here hundreds and thousands of years ago, but the timing and composition is changing. And when we know the link, how it affects the fish, then we can just be prepared for the change. Thanks to the Salish Sea Marine Survival Project, uh, the data richness is going.